All right, and we are live. Here we go. Alexi Dos Santos against Konchenko. Or is it Alexi Konchenko? Yeah, I mean, yo, these guys are welterweights. They're ready to bang. Both these guys look big. Yeah, absolutely. What are we expecting from this one? So far, Dos Santos is is coming out kicking. A lot, a lot of kicks early. A lot, a lot of uh, striking from Dos Santos. Konchenko is is just backing him down. When those when those strikes come, he back he backs away defensively, but he's stalking. He's stalking. You know, these guys are both feeling each other out with Konchenko moving forward. Leg kick from Dos Santos. Ooh. Konchenko threw a leg kick. It was partially caught by Dos Santos, who tried to counter, but it didn't work out. Both guys are back and forth in the center of the octagon right now. Yeah, it's so weird not having any crowd. I mean, all you can hear is uh, uh, Brazilian in the background. The 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 corners are are shouting instructions in Brazilian. That's what's happening. Man, this is uh, a weird way that things are going on. But shout out to Dana White and the UFC for giving us something to watch. You know, everybody canceled everything. At least this is still taking place. I mean, yeah, it's a ghost town in there. You can see the tumbleweeds blowing through the back. There's not a single soul out there. Obviously, they're not showing the crowd at all as a result. But it looks like Dos Santos is trying to use his kicks and... Konchenko is looking to load up a right hand bomb. He's looking to land that right hand bomb. That's what I I see coming. Is he's he's there? It goes and he lets one go. He misses with the right, but he comes through, fouls with the left, and he finds the chin. Dos Santos felt that he comes forward with a couple of shots and a kick, but Konchenko right back out of the distance. This is going to be an exciting fight. Once these guys start banging, they both got their make to make this fight good. Both look like they have power in those shots. They're both going to swing. Konchenko came in with that right, but he caught the counter right to the cheek there. Let's see how this goes. All right, so center of the octagon, both fighters. Another another strike there by uh Dos Santos is is really trying to to keep the distance with the Dos Santos is definitely trying to keep the distance with those kicks but uh Konchenko has actually an excellent defense he's covering up he's using his his forearms and his elbows to block anything that's coming in so we'll see we'll see how that goes Center of the octagon has been controlled by Konchenko most of the time. He's definitely dangerous with those hands. And it seems like Dos Santos respects it. So whatever touch, whatever touch that he has felt, he respects at this point. And here we go. Dos Santos jumps in for the takedown and he gets it. And Konchenko's against his back, up against the cage. He's trying to get up. Can Dos Santos keep him down? He's trying, but Konchenko's up. He lands a couple of rights to the cheek. Of Dos Santos, they're up against the fence. They're they're fighting the hands. He's got a body lock. I think that Kinchenko is uh, in a bad position here because up against the fence, he's going to be vulnerable for this takedown. And I think that's what's going to happen. Um, I think that I think that with a level change here, Dos Santos can get a takedown. There's about 30 seconds left in the round. I expect him to dip level change and try to go for this takedown. Let's see if he does it. Instead, the referee breaks them up. Para. Let's go. 20 seconds. Center of the octagon. Guys, touch gloves. I don't see the point of that. Just go in there and bang. Don't even touch gloves. 20 seconds, guys. 20 seconds. Of course, those Santos throws a kick. 
It doesn't do anything. He's backing up ever so slightly as Konchenko moves forward. That's the first kick Konchenko's thrown. And then he throws a right left. He's trying to mix it up. That round, I'm going to have to give that round mostly to Dos Santos because of that takedown and what he was able to do there against Konchenko. He didn't, wasn't able to really do much, but he was able to do more. Who do you guys got winning that round right there? I know it's only the first round, but so far we've had a bunch of decisions and the last fight ended in a draw. So I think it's pretty obvious that we could end up with the same similar situation here of uh, a lot of these fights going to the judges. A lot of grappling is going to be in play as most of this card are Brazilians, right? So you're going to have a lot of grappling. Welcome to Fight Conversations. I'm Lex Las Vegas. Due to the coronavirus, the UFC is still having this event, but without fans. So there are no fans in the building. No fans in the building. And it's crazy. I mean, we were expecting March Madness. We're anticipating it here in Las Vegas. It's a great time of year. We love it. This was not the March Madness we wanted. This, was, this is a different type of March Madness. And here we go, round two. These guys are ready. It looks to me like Dos Santos has the reach advantage. He looks like the taller fighter, but he's definitely using those kicks. And Konchenko claims he caught one to the beans. So he's in the he's resting the beans right right, right now, right? Los cojones. He got one in the cojones. So I'm excited. I think that with this is the first time I can even remember when we had no sports. I mean, yeah, all sports, we've gone through a lockout or a strike or something at one time or another. But to not have all of them at the same time, th that's just unprecedented. Shout out to UFC. Very smart of Dana White to keep it going because he opened himself an opportunity to go from ESPN Plus to ESPN. And that's huge because we all know ESPN would have nothing but NCAA games today if, if it was a regular day. This would be March Madness, NCAA basketball. Everywhere you look, it's going to be basketball. Instead, we're watching UFC, and anybody without ESPN Plus is able to watch this. Once again, both these guys are doing a filling out process. They're both staying at the edge of each other's strikes. They, I think they both felt a little of each other's power in the last round. And they're really trying to make sure that they don't get caught by each other's strikes. Oh, big shot by Dos Santos. Con uh oh, they're on the ground. He looks like he's got a leg lock on Konchenko. Konchenko scrambles out of it, back up to his feet. His scrambles are excellent. He's still got one leg, Dos Santos, that is. Konchenko gets that leg free. They're up against the cage. Couple of shots to the body by Konchenko. Can Konchenko dip his level and get a takedown? No, he backs out to the center of the cage, and they're back to the same thing again. Dos Santos throws some kicks, counter punch right by Konchenko landed. So strange just hearing Brazilian in the background. Konchenko landed a big right. Dos Santos felt that one. He definitely felt that one. Konchenko is definitely the striker out of these two. I'll tell you that right now, 100%. All right, so here we go. We're in round two, three, and change left. So far, Dos Santos' strikes have been majority kicks. Oh, he just got caught with a right by Konchenko coming in. But he pushes Konchenko up against the fence for defense, trying to get a hold of his body on a body lock. Quick punches to the cheek by Konchenko. Those aren't doing anything. You know, yeah, those 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 have no power on them at all. They are clinched up against the fence. Body lock by Dos Santos. Let's see if he drops down level change and tries to go for a takedown, tries to take a leg. I don't think he'll be able to at this point because it looked like Konchenko is defending that by holding his arm. He's got... Konchenko, that is, has his left arm over and around Dos Santos' arm, trying to, to keep him in place, trying to keep him from going for that level change. Will he get that level change? Another stalemate. The refs break him up. Good job, ref. Good job. Let's go. 
All right, back. I know. I know. What I'm gonna see. I'm, I'm. I'm anticipating Dos Santos with a kick, and he throws a punch, and then a low leg kick. Okay. Okay. He's varying it up a little bit. Let's see what you got, Dos Santos. You're in. You're out here. You're the Brazilian. What do you got? They're banging, throwing punches. Both clipped each other. No real damage. Both guys are still in the mix. Couple of kicks thrown by Dos Santos. They circle around. Konchenko holding the middle. Left by. Dos Santos thrown up the middle, couple of kicks, spin attack, yo, back and forth. Both of these guys are just out of range on most of their shots. They come in, they land a few back and forth. Oh, spinning kick from Dos Santos, but he missed its mark. If he can land one of those kicks, I mean, I think it's going to either be a kick from Dos Santos or a punch from Buchenko or Kunchenko. Wow, you can really hear the kicks when they hit each other because it's an empty arena. You got a, you got a kick to the body in an empty arena. It sounds like a slap. This is this is really something. This time and age, we're watching fights in empty arenas with the coronavirus. I just want to shout out again Dana White for having these fights continue so that we have something going on today sports-wise. You know, both these guys are trading. I don't really see much of an advantage in this round for either fighter. Konchenko is definitely, I mean, definitely looks like he's hes more on the boxing mindset and Dos Santos looks like he's more trying to throw kicks. Konchenko has thrown kicks. Dos Santos has thrown punches. Oh, Konchenko catches the kick at Dos Santos and lands a right. 20 seconds left, center of the octagon. Who wants it more? Pretty much an even round. I hope we don't get a lot of even rounds in this card. I mean, if we have a lot of even rounds, it could be because there's no crowd, right? The crowd, there's no energy to push the fighters to push themselves. It just feels kind of like a dead atmosphere. It really does. The, the vibe is not there. The energy is not there. It feels like a practice. It just, it doesn't have the same energy. It's interesting because, you know, we have all these things all the time, every day in our lives that we take for granted. And now we don't have them anymore. I mean, who thought that one of the things we'd be appreciating is an audience in the arena? Is that something that we thought we wouldn't have? We thought we'd have empty arenas? I didn't think that would be the case. But that's a new reality right now with this coronavirus. Hopefully, we can get everything back to control and we can get things going. But I think it's already too late for March Madness. I think it's over. March Madness is screwed. I mean, anybody who has been watching LeBron and the Lakers and how unbelievable they've been playing, that's also beat now. That Everybody's going to – I mean, you know how it goes with basketball players, right? Like the longer they stay away, they start to get rusty. Then they have to work themselves back in. They're at a great level right now at this time of year playing. I mean, usually the season only goes to like April 15th. So, I mean, it's not that much time left, like a month almost, maybe maybe – uh, maybe a little more, not much. So here we go, round three. Who's gonna want it? Both fighters come out, touch hands. I, I don't. I mean, do you see fighters touch gloves every round so much? I think it's more because it has a practice feel. Because there's no crowd, it's really strange. You know, I, I, I think, I don't, I don't think, uh, I would be able to, uh. Have him advance, maybe if you say advantage. Uh, may, maybe the last round, I think Konchenko might have had that. So I'm probably going to have this in my mind as as even. Um, the first round for Dos Santos, the second round for Konchenko. And this is either going to have to go, um, somebody's going to have to go here strong or win it, or we can end up seeing a bunch of draws. I'm going to call it here ahead of time. I think we see another couple of draws on this card tonight. Because without the crowd rooting and, and making it feel like a certain shot does more or, or or is a bigger shot, it just it feels like a different a different animal out there that we're watching. Like it's it's really weird. I have to say, I never thought we'd be watching UFC with with no audience. It's kind of like watching Tough Enough, right? So it's similar. So far, I would say that this fight, in my opinion, is pretty even. And somebody's going to have to turn it up if they want to win this fight. You know, I don't know what, what the uh, the numbers are in terms of the striking and um, 
and uh and who's winning that battle let's take a look um but i do know this i do know that uh these guys got to get busy if they want to win this fight and it looks like to me it looks like to me that uh Kinchenko is winning the significant strike battle which we expected because he's the one you know throwing all of these counter shots he's waiting for these kicks he's moving he's and in the last round when he caught dos santos's kick and and punched him right in the face that was that was a very that was probably the most significant clean strike of the fight um Konchenko was definitely backing him down he landed a nice overhand right he's the i power advantage optics I'm going to say Konchenko has the power advantage. It definitely looks like Dos Santos doesn't like those shots. He's still trying to go for those leg kicks, but he's getting tagged He's getting tagged with uh, counters when he comes in with that. So if you're going to go to a leg kick, make sure that you have those hands up. That's kind of like what happened with uh, Jan Blockowitz and um, Anderson. Anderson came, Corey Anderson came with that low leg kick, right? And he got knocked out. Knocked the fuck out as... Uh, Smokey from Friday would say, shout out to Chris Tucker out there. I'm going to say uh, this fight is going to go to Konchenko unless Dos Santos can up his effort because Konchenko was controlling the octagon, backing them all around. He just landed a left there as well. Every time Dos Santos comes in with the hands trying to land punches, it seems like Konchenko is able to get out of the way and land the counter. So far, the best weapons for Dos Santos have been um, a combination of of grappling, takedown attempts, and kicks. But he hasn't really been able to do anything with it. They're up against the fence here. Konchenko had thrown a punch. It was ducked under by Dos Santos, who then grabbed him. Um, he did not attempt to take him down, but he took him against the fence. Wow! Spinning back fist by Konchenko. Just misses as they separate back to the center of the octagon. One minute left. Who wants this more? I think I have to agree with you that it really does look like uh, Konchenko was winning this fight by this. I have to agree, Tornike. I think that uh, Konchenko was winning this fight. Unless unless Dos Santos is able to do something miraculous here, like a head kick knockout in the last 30 seconds, I think the output of this fight, takedown by Dos Santos. Is that going to make a difference for the judges? Now, that could make things ugly because the, I know that Konchenko has no takedowns. That's the second takedown here in another round for Dos Santos. That might push this more in a draw direction because I really thought that Barzola did enough in the last one to win, and it went to a draw. So I don't know how the judges are reading this. Maybe this is going to be uh, benefit of the doubt on both sides, another draw. But most likely, I'm going to agree with you that uh, Konchenko gets the win. That's that's my opinion. I'm going to go Konchenko, and I'm going to go 29-28. Uh, I think he Konchenko won rounds two and three in that one. And it's interesting how that works, how many times, you know, a fighter will lose the first round, come out guns blazing round two, and then carry that momentum into round three. Um, I would be surprised if we saw this one as a... I would be surprised if this one was a draw. I think Konchenko was going to win this one. I agree. I think Konchenko did a lot more damage in terms of significant strikes so i my my vote is my judging my scorecard is 29 28 konchenko that's what i have i think konchenko won rounds two and three and i think that uh dos santos i would give him the first round you know he got the takedown and he did a little bit more uh work in the first round but i'm gonna say 29 28 for konchenko what do you guys think? Sounds like everybody has Konchenko. They have not announced yet. We will find out right here in one minute. We are waiting for the announcements now. So we're going to find out right here. So TV, are you in China over there? Are those Chinese letters? How's it going over there? Crazy what's going on in the world today with this coronavirus. 
Let's see what the decision is. The referee is about to read the decision now. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. No. 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 I'm sorry. Konchenko did not win. That fight went to unanimous decision to Dos Santos. Unfortunately, I have a suspicion that that last takedown was the deciding factor. Dos Santos got takedowns in rounds one and three. And in Brazil with Brazilian judges, that might have been the kiss of death for Konchenko. But great fight from Konchenko. He deserved to win that fight. I thought he did more. I thought he landed more. Let's take a look at the significant strikes. Significant strikes almost double for Konchenko. Total strikes almost double for Konchenko. Takedowns, two for Dos Santos, none for Konchenko. And in my opinion, that was the difference in the fight. It was the takedowns. Konchenko with no takedowns and a take and getting taken down in rounds one and three in Brazil. That was home cooking for the Brazilian. I don't think Dos Santos earned that one. I would have been more, I think a, a draw would have been more fair to Konchenko than that decision. That was ridiculous in my opinion. That was ridiculous. Uh-oh, is this Ronda Marcos? Yo, I'm a big Ronda Marcos fan. Absolutely. Let's get this going. Yeah. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to stop this stream. We're going to fire it right back up in one minute for the next event. Come right back and join us. Fight Conversations. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We will be right back. One minute break for the next fight set up. And it's going to be Ronda Marcos. She is a beast. If you haven't seen Random Marcos fight, you want to see this fight. I'll be right back in a minute. Fight Conversations.